I'm here with Jack Thorne from the University of Cambridge. Uh, Jack, you're invited to give a lecture here at the International Congress of Mathematics in Rio in your area of number theory. Um, what drew you to working in number theory? Well, actually, when I first started uh, mathematical research, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do because I found lots of different things quite attractive. Um, so I think one of the reasons that I was attracted to number theory finally was it blends a lot of different areas. If you want to do number theory, you have to know a little bit of algebra, a little bit of group theory, a little bit of representation theory, analysis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but there are other things that I really like about it as well that I've kind of discovered having been in the subject for a little bit longer. Um, and what, one thing I really like is the way that coincidences play a role in the subject. And there's a really nice example of this in uh, the proof of Matt's last theorem by Wiles. It's a very famous piece of number theory from the last few decades. Um, so he builds up this huge theoretical edifice using all, you know, input from all of the, the subjects that I just mentioned. But then at the end, he has to he has to find somewhere to get started, to, to you know, something to plug into the big machine that he's built. And, and there's a metaphor that some people use that I quite like, which is faceting the gemstone. Right? You know, it, it's wonderful being a master jeweler, but you need the raw materials before you can get started. And uh, there's this amazing coincidence. So what he really needs to prove is what we call the, uh, the modularity of semi-stable elliptic curves. And uh, elliptic curves have these other attached things called gala representations, which are highly symmetric. But the symmetry groups that are acting, there's one for every prime p, are really quite complicated. And the coincidence that enters in is it just so happens for this prime p that you can split off from the group that's acting um, the, the symmetry group of the tetrahedron, which is simple enough that it's you know, it, it, can, it's, it can be used to input into uh, everything else. So somehow there's this blend of having to understand the theory and be able to build up all of these objects and then kind of searching for the right starting point. It, it makes it quite exciting, I think. Jack, you were invited to give a lecture here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you spoke about? Uh, sure. So uh, a lot of my work is actually focusing on trying to go uh, a bit further than Wiles did. Um, taking his work as a, as a starting point. Um, so I mean, his big achievement proving Fermat, so that's showing that the equation uh, x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n doesn't have any non-trivial integer solutions as long as n is uh, at, least, at least 3. Um, but number theorists, they care about all number systems, not just the integers. So you can equally well ask, well, if I look at another number system, um, are there any solutions or not? And the kinds of number systems we normally talk about are, are called number fields. So that's what you get when you start off with the integers and then you throw in some more uh, algebraic numbers like the square root of 2 or uh, you know, a solution of x to 5 plus x plus 1 equals 0 or, or something like that. So these are uh, algebraic numbers. And it's of interest to try and find solutions to equations like the Fermat equation in those number systems as well. Um, and that, that's more or less what I'll be talking about. And how have you been enjoying the ICM? What have your highlights been so far? Well, it, it's really exciting. I mean, this is my first ICM. Um, I think for many people it's a once-in-a-lifetime event, especially visiting the ICM in Rio. Um, I have to say I really enjoyed the opening ceremony um, because well, there's the excitement of hearing the Fields medals and the other big awards announced, um, but then there was a you know, marvellous spectacle that were these musical entertainments and... Um, you know, seeing all these distinguished mathematicians coming together to celebrate the subject. It's, it's something quite special, I think. And is it, what's important about coming to a big meeting like this, an international congress such as this? Well, th th that's a good question, because you know, most of the conferences that I normally go to as a research mathematician, they're quite specialised, and you're bringing together groups of people who are trying to really push the envelope. Whereas, obviously, the aim of a conference like this is, is very different. Um, and at, at the heart of it is, I think, the fact that mathematics is really a very social discipline. I mean, none of these amazing stars could exist in isolation. Somehow you, you need other mathematicians even to give your own work meaning, because if there's no one to, to interpret and to respond to what you're doing, um, it just wouldn't make sense. You, know, you couldn't have Pythagoras without the Pythagoreans, somehow. Um, so I think you know, just, just to have people coming together to celebrate and recognize excellence in mathematics and to, you know, to meet people he wouldn't normally meet. Um, I think it's very important for the health of the subject. I'm very happy to be able to participate. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Congress and good luck for your talk this afternoon. Thank you.